Hey everybody, I'm Tarl Yarber with Fixated Real Estate and I'm here back at our grow house. Like, not our grow house anymore, but the house, if you remember, we bought a property that you could see on Bigger Pockets on a previous video, where we did a thorough walkthrough of this property right before we trashed it all out. It was an active grow house we bought uh, from, a prop, from, a, from a seller that was doing it illegally, got raided by the police and everything. Uh, we showed you what it looked like, so look up that property, it's a legal grow house and how to flip one. Now I wanna show you guys what it looks like after we trashed it all out. And one of our main tips that we gave you on the first video video was don't get distracted by all the distractions uh, in the property such as all the gross stuff and all the trash out everything everything out there to make it really hard to bid a property so let me show you what it looks like now now that it's all out and how easy this property is going to be for you to actually like get a scope of work going get your contractors moving so check it out inside let's go all right so we're back in the house and if you watched the last video that we did on this house the how to flip an illegal grow house go to YouTube to watch it this is where we ended the video last time right we we're standing like literally right here and it was just like piled up you couldn't see anything there's silver freak silver freaking aluminum oil everywhere we didn't know what was going on with it but one of the biggest lessons we gave you guys on that video was don't be distracted by any of that stuff because once you get it all out it's just a normal old house this is a 1910s house something like that and we knew there's gonna be a lot of stuff we had to do to it so we made these big budgets so that way we could take care of it one of the big budget items that we did on that was electrical because we knew they hacked in the electrical so we already knew right away that we were going to have to do a lot of brand new electrical, specifically that this house isn't to code on a lot of levels. And once we take the rehab to a certain level here in Seattle, we have to bring a lot of stuff up the code, specifically electrical. There's not enough outlets. There's no outlets here. There's an outlet there. That's not an outlet, Never mind. So there's two prong outlet here. That means it's not grounded. So, and it's that way throughout the house. So because they did a hack job, we knew we were gonna replace all the electrical. So why do we need to see the entire house if we know we're replacing all electrical? Make sense? Another thing that we knew we were gonna do because we couldn't see most of the sheetrock underneath it, we knew it was lath and plaster. So we had to make a big judgment call saying like, okay, there's gonna be a lot of lath and plaster we gotta replace because it's got a spider web everywhere. And let me show you what I mean by that. When it's spider webs, lath and plaster, it just starts to crack off and does this kind of thing, right? Which doesn't really make it easy to, for, to repair. And once you start hacking into that stuff, I've seen it just crackle everywhere. People try to skim coat it, it crackles again. There's a very specific way to repair lath and plaster. And one of the best ways to do it is rip it out and just put new sheetrock in. But uh, in this house, we knew we were gonna do that anyway. So did we have to see the whole house? No, we just put a big budget of replace the lath and plaster, especially when we replace the electrical and the plumbing in this house, we're gonna do a lot. We also didn't like the floor plan. Let me show you that. So when we walked it, one of the big issues on the floor plan was the kitchen is smack dab in the middle of the house, right here. Old school style people, whatever, in the early 1900s, love to have the house, the kitchen in the center for whatever reason. You got a bathroom over there, bedroom over here, bedroom, dining, and then boom, and stairs, whatever, right? Nobody likes that these days, so we have to move the kitchen, right, to make this work, especially for the value we want to get for the property. Before we move the kitchen, that, that takes a lot of money. You got to do the framing, you got to do the electrical, you got to do the plumbing. Well, without even knowing where to put it, we knew we were gonna do all that anyway, so we put a big budget for that. And one of it was the plumbing. The plumbing is galvanized. We saw that in the basement, we saw that here already, we knew that it's, we saw that in the bathroom in the last video. We knew we were gonna replace most of this because to get top dollar, we need to put the fancy pecs in to make the people here like it a little bit better. So when you're replacing 100% of the plumbing in the house already, you can also put it wherever you want to put it in the house and it should be the roughly the same budget at the end of the day. So on this property, we decided we're gonna move, we're gonna keep the bathroom where it's at, but we're going to move the kitchen over here. And so we're gonna knock all these walls out. So pretend like they go away, so they're gone. All right, now, <laughs> for, like use your imagination. So we're gonna move all this out, right? And we're gonna put the kitchen in this area over here, open this all up. So when you walk into the front door, it's gonna be a nice big open area because people love open spaces these days, gets top dollar, it's, it's a wow factor. Wee. So when we do that, it's gonna be great. We have to do all the electrical as it is, do the plumbing as it is, and do a lot of sheetrock as it is. And we also budgeted heavy framing to be able to change the floor plan, right? So when you keep those in mind, we didn't have to see all of this to know what the budget was gonna be because we knew we were knocking it all out anyways. And at that point, Budgets are a little bit easier to be able to manage if you just do the big budgets and just take care of it. Best part about doing that is that uh, you kind of have to like, you can't really, you can negotiate with the seller and you can just say, hey, look, we can't see everything and here's what we have to budget because we know we have to do it until we get everything out. And so this is just what our offer is gonna be. And a lot of sellers are gonna understand that, especially hoarders and especially people with a lot of crap in their property. They get it, they know what they're living in. Here's one of the best parts about this house because it's rare. Almost never when you trash out a hoarder house is it actually have anything valuable in it. It's almost always crap, like 
like literal crap <laughs> most of the time. And our camera guy, Nate, can tell you all about it because he's kind of a neat freak and he's been to some nasty houses and they got crap all over him. But he'll tell you, show you that another day. So that said, we're gonna go to the garage here in a moment before you comment, like, subscribe all over this video and join Bigger Pockets. I wanna show you a little bonus factor on this because you remember we had these big hydroponic uh, like cans everywhere and planters and all that stuff like that. Did some research, those things are worth some money. So let's go check it out because we could sell those. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're in the garage. And like I said, this is one of the best parts. These things were all over this house, if you remember in the previous video and stuff. And we looked them up. They're actually worth something. Like these things alone are probably worth, you know, maybe 40 bucks a pop when they're brand new. Uh, these things, who knows, maybe a dollar a piece or something. These big guys here, brand new, are somewhere around like 100 ish. And same with those too. So you add it all up, there's, you know, a couple grand with the brand new stuff. But it might not actually be, you know, just be able to sell it that much uh, on the street. Uh, for, for that much money right now since they've been used and actually while we were recording this we had one of the neighbors come by and offer us like a thousand bucks just for all this already and we're like do you want to be the next house that gets your door broken into because that's like no I own a nursery yeah right all right anyways but we might actually sell it to them who knows so point of battery is that sometimes you can find some stuff you can sell it offset your rehab this is probably worth more than a thousand bucks but there's an ease process too I don't want to like piece this off on Craigslist all day because that means we have to come back here and sell this shit so we're not going to do that we'll probably sell it to guy for maybe thousand bucks probably 1500 because i think he load balled us but keep that in mind so go to when you go to bigger pockets make sure you comment like subscribe this video join us on youtube follow me fixated re you can follow us on youtube follow us on instagram follow us on facebook you can follow me tarl yarber on instagram too if you want uh and make sure you comment like subscribe for bigger pockets and we'll see you guys in the next video because we're going to keep these videos going hopefully show you the entire progress of this property uh, as it unfolds see you next time